trip to Israel. For most people, the trip to Israel is a trip of tourism, of seeing family, of going to see sites, of appreciating certain sights and sounds that you don't see all the time here. To me, Israel is its people, but more than just its people, the holy people that are found in the holy cities throughout Israel. That's what Israel is all about. Israel has a lot of antiquity. The antiquity means a lot to us. It has the Kosel, but to me the Kosel, the Western Wall, is sanctified because of the people who make it holy. It is important, but I believe a new temple will descend upon the mountain sometime soon. But to get to the crux of the holiness of Israel, it's the holiness of the people, the uniqueness of the people that are there, and the people that are buried there. The tomb of the patriarchs, Rachel's tomb, the tomb of Rabbi Simon Bar Yochai, the author of the Zohar, the tomb of the Ari, Rabbi Isaac Luria. These are the holy places of Israel, including the, 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 the Temple Mount. And the Temple Mount, of course, we can't go on because we're considered ritually impure, so we pray there as close as we can get, which is, that's why we have the plaza in front of the Western Wall. And um, ordinarily, I would not, would not be talking about this because for me, the most important place of all is not Israel, is the place that I reside because that's the place where I can do the most good. I can do very little good coming to Israel. I'm not a rich man. and I can't change the world there. We can only change the world when we have contact with other people, one-on-one, -on -one, or one in front of a large audience, which is the reason why I do these videos. Understand when God says to Abraham, go out of your place, go out of your birthplace, go out of your your land, go out of the, the, pla the, the neighborhood where you've lived for such a long time and the people that you know and the allies that have allied themselves with you. Go away from there to a strange land, to the land that I will show you. So, but it doesn't say the land that I will show you that land. It says, our echo, I will show you. What does it mean that I will show you? So the answer is, I will show you to yourself. You will discover who you really are when you come to the land of Israel. The advantage of coming to the land of Israel is that you become in touch with who you really are, the essence of yourself, which is your soul. And that's the reason why I'm staying there a few days, because I want to meet up with people that can help me get to the essence and the core of my soul. The core of our soul is tied with God. The core of our soul is one with God. But it gets covered up by a lot of extraneous stuff. Some of the extraneous stuff is the material dross of the world. We're worried about politics. We're worried about the weather. We're worried about our livelihood, which is important. We're worried about whether we look good or not. We're worried about how people think, what people think of us. We're worried about extraneous stuff. We don't worry about what the essence of our being here in this world is. And the essence of our being in this world and the essence of our soul is to bring down God, who is one with our soul, into this world and make the world a better world. Some people think that God is up there and he's some giant in the sky. God is not a giant in the sky. God is undefined. God is truly infinite. God there is neither finite or infinite. God has no definition. God is wherever you let God in. God is with you wherever you do something that's kind and compassionate, wherever you do good and shed light. That's where God is. God is with the person when you let yourself function and create a different world. The reason why there's misery in the world is so that you can change it one step at a time. We talked about that with Moses. Moses was a man of action, ready to punch Paro, lights out, and send them to kingdom come. God said, no, that's not the way the Torah works. The Torah works by communication. You communicate, you try to influence, and if you can't, then God steps in and allows things to happen. But the way of the Torah is to change the world one step at a time. Every creature in the world is important. Even Ahmadinejad is important. If we had the opportunity and the possibility of changing his mind, that would be the best thing. Unfortunately, I see no such 
possibility and perhaps he has to be done away with. But it is not for me or you to do away with him. The way we work is to shed light, to bring light into this world. And if need be, God will intervene on our behalf. But in order to be connected to this, to realize that we are here for a purpose, from time to time we have to get rejuvenated. That's the reason why Hasidim go to a Rebbe's home and to where the Rebbe is. And of course, we Hasidim go to 770, because that's where the Lubavitcher Rebbe davened and he prayed and he did his things for over 40 years in that holy place and his father-in-law before him. And so the place has been sanctified. That's the place where we get inspiration. That's the place where we get enthusiasm. That's the place where we begin to feel connected to God. And the same thing happens when you go to a holy place such as the Western Wall and connect with holy people, which is what I'm looking forward to do. And I want to tell you, I have in mind to make a tour of Israel, but I don't want it just to be a sightseeing tour, to go up to Matzada and to sing Matzada Odlotipo. That's not what Israel is all about. Israel's essence are the saints, and the scholars of Israel, the holy people of Israel. And I know some of them, and I'd like some of you out there to get to know them. But that's only if you want to discover yourself and discover what the essence of Judaism, the essence of what Israel is really all about. That's what I'm about to try to discover in this uh, visit, and I hope I can inspire some of you to come along with me the next time and visit some of the true spiritual sites of Israel, the people